Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today I have another 1920s project for you all. I sometimes get asked about 1920s daywear and it's something I don't have a lot of, I haven't made a lot of, and partially that is because it's a harder decade to replicate uh, if you, like you can't really get a hold of the accessories for daywear for 1920s stuff nearly as easily as you can for say like the 1940s. For 1920s daywear, the hats are pretty important and they are just a lot harder to find originals of and uh, very rare to find reproductions of. So. Um, it's not something I have a lot of experience trying to replicate 1920s day wear because it's just so hard to find some of the elements that I don't usually you know, really bother. But I did want a 1920s summer like daytime dress and I decided that if I was going to make one it would be rude to do it off camera. So today I'm going to be making a white eyelet 1920s dress in a more kind of sporty or almost like tennis dress inspired style. Here are some images of dresses that were inspiring me for this project. I was originally going to make the whole thing out of a cotton eyelet that I had purchased off of Mood Fabrics. I will link to the fabric in the description here, but I actually didn't ha get myself, I kind of shorted myself on fabric. I didn't get quite enough to do the whole dress in the eyelet, so I had to supplement that with a little bit of cotton voile in a solid, but I think that actually really pushed me to come up with a creative solution, and I hope you like what I came up with. I'll take you over to the blue patterning table of doom and we can get started. Today I'm going to be making a white eyelet cotton 1920s one hour dress, um, or a variation of the one hour dress basically. Hopefully it'll look a little bit like this when I'm done. It's kind of inspired by some 1920s like tennis dress or sportier 1920s summery dresses, although we know I don't get very sporty, but I could, you know, walk around a paved garden sometime, um, which is about as sporty as I get. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so the pattern for this, very similar to my other 1920s dresses you've seen me make here on the channel, begins with the one hour dress pattern, which looks like this. You've seen me Make this here on the channel before if you've been around for a while. I have a very long 1920s one hour dress video tutorial here on the channel where I ramble on about this pattern at length and different variations you could do with it. Um, for this dress today basically I'm going to be cutting across like so usually I cut this all out in one and this becomes like the sleeve extensions and these get pleated or gathered down to become the extensions for the skirt. For this because I don't have enough eyelet fabric to do the whole dress in the eyelet fabric I'll be doing the top in eyelet and then the center panel of both the front of the skirt and the <laughs> front, the front of the skirt and the back of the skirt in the eyelet, and then the side panels here, the pleats along the side of the skirt of this dress will be plain white cotton wool, and then I'll have that as an accent up here on the squared off neckline and along the sleeve hems as well. Um, so I'm going to be basically cutting the top T of the eye-shaped pattern here off and I will be making the skirt portion separately and sewing it onto the top T portion. So we'll have the top of the one hour dress pattern and then I will sew the skirt back on, um, just making the skirt by sewing together a panel of eyelet, a panel of wall, panel of eyelet, and then back to the other panel of wall. Pleat these two panels down to create the skirt. I'll show you all this when I'm sewing it. Um, but essentially that's all I'm doing differently for the pattern is just cutting the top of it off the skirt. Of course I'll need seam allowance on either side of that, um, but the top of the one hour dress pattern, we can see it here. The other difference, I usually just leave the tops of these like a very high straight across neckline and I just sew from the shoulder in, and from the shoulder in, and then leave a space blank in the center for me to use to, you know, put it on over my head. For this one I am going to come and cut down a little bit of a squared off neckline here, just very short. Um, I'll probably only come in like two inches, so two inches in the front, two inches in the back, because the front and back of this dress are identical. So here on my fabric, these are my little sleeve extensions. Here's the rest of my dress. Right now it would be a very high neckline. I'm just going to cut down again two inches here, come across in two inches. Um, this is the front and the back set on top of each other, so I'll just cut both at once. Cut a little squared off neckline there, um, and then I will go ahead and hem the sides of it and put on a little bit of an accent with the plain cotton. Um, I just cut some strips of that plain cotton after I cut out my skirt panels here, which again, I will show you when it comes to sewing the skirt. The first thing I have to do for the rest of this, after I cut that little neckline section out, um, you can cut whatever shape of neckline you want on these, by the way, if you wanted to cut a V, finish with the facing, cut a curved neckline, whatever you want to do, add a collar, get creative. Um, I usually leave them quite plain, especially because I like to wear long necklaces with these, so I don't like a lot going on up here to interfere with long beaded necklaces, because for me, 1920s dresses are almost just an excuse to be able to wear beaded jewelry, because um, I really like making beaded jewelry. So my first step for this, actually, I'm going to go ahead and 
use my serger to finish the raw edges of this um, so that those are all encompassed and that this will be quite washable for me. I have pre-washed this cotton. Um, the nice thing about having a 100% cotton dress as opposed to, you know, a silk chiffon dress is that the cotton one can be thrown in the wash. So that is always a good thing when it comes to summer clothes, in my opinion. All right, so I cut down and cut out a little bit of a neckline here on this guy. And I'll finish that with some plain cotton. And I've also gone ahead and surged my raw edges here. I can go ahead and sew my shoulder seams here. And then also the kind of underarm and side seams of this top half of my 1920s dress here. And then I can also go ahead and sew these are panels that are 15 inches wide, um, one for the front and one for the back, obviously. And then these are panels that are also, I believe, I think I cut these at 15 as well, um, or 16 maybe for seam allowance um, of plain voile. So I can go ahead and sew basically these four together, every other, so that, that these are on the sides and these are on the centers. So I can sew those along the lengths Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so I can sew these panels together. I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. And sew all this stuff that I've pinned. Okay, so I have my top all sewn together. I um, went ahead and snipped. I actually, I put an extra line of stitching in here and then I snipped my corner because I'm going to need that to be open for all this to be smooth. I did iron my, or press my seams open as well. You can kind of tell here. I have marked the center of my garment here on the front and back. And then I have the skirt portion here. So for the skirt portion, again, I have a eyelet piece in the front and the back, and then I've just sewn that to the strips of plain cotton for the sides here. So I'm gonna line up the centers of these with the centers of this, and figure out, this table is so squeaky, <laughs> figure out how kind of deep I wanna make my little box plates in the side here. So this is gonna become a box plate, so this will fit into here. So we'll go ahead and pleat that down to how big it needs to be. I'll show you that. And then I can go ahead and pin it in, pin the skirt to the top. Ugh, still can't speak. Skirt to the top, and then I can sew it on. So for the sides of this dress, if you imagine this is where the side seam will be when it's attached to the top here. I originally was gonna have more pleats. Um, I ended up going with a narrower side piece of the plain cotton here just because I need to use the rest of it that I bought for something else. So I could only sacrifice so much of it to this project. Um, so I'm just gonna do a box pleat here along the side seam. So I've just pleated that down where it needs to be to fit to the top portion. I'm actually gonna stitch down this pleat about three inches on here just for effect, top stitch it down, I suppose, along all that. And then I did go ahead and press that pleat all the way down to what will eventually be the hem. So this is gonna be nice and crisply pleated and hopefully it will stay nice when it's on the body, but we'll see. Right now I have the skirt in the top portions pinned together along the dropped waist area with right sides together and I can go ahead and sew the skirt to the top. Okay, so I'm doing some work up here at the top to finish the neckline of this dress. I'm gonna do some trimming with the plain cotton just to tie the whole, whole dress together. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm trimming the front neckline like so. I just have a strip of cotton that's four inches wide and then folded. This is a straight grain cotton, not biased by the way. Um, I just have it folded in on itself and then the ends folded in and then I'm going to trim the front neckline like this and then I'm going to put another strip on top of this. I did actually, I think I made the neckline just a tiny bit too wide so I'm going to, instead of doing, I was going to have this the same way and have this little square empty here. I thought that would be fun um, to have this little kind of art deco situation here. So I'm not exactly sure how I want to finish this now because I want to overlap the trim a little bit over just because I came out just a tiny bit far. Um, so I'm not sure if I want to somehow make it so the trim looks like this kind of. We'll see, we'll see how how it goes. Um, I will show you what I end up doing. Um, but you know, this is just, again, I'm just doing this quite freely here. I'm not having much of a plan. I'm just doing what feels right in the moment. You must do what you feel is right, of course, to quote my favorite Jedi. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and hand sew this on, sort of applique it to the top of this and then stitch it down on the inside. And I'm gonna do the other side the same. This is the back neckline. Do the same thing to the back and then I will figure out what I wanna do here. And then I do have bias strips. Ignore this other eyelet that will become a 40s dress. Um, th these are bias strips here to finish the sleeves edges as well. And then all I will have to do after that is hem this, but I will talk you through that when we get there. 
All right, so I have the front and the back encased. Obviously my stitches on the back, I didn't bother with being as fine as on the front here, um, on the outside, I suppose. And then I'm going to, for, this is the shoulder seam here, for along the arm here, I'm just, instead of encasing the raw edge, I'm going next to it and I'll whip, kind of stitch it down. Um, and I'm having it overhang that cut edge just because I cut it a little bit wide, but I'll just secure everything on the underside and it will be all fine from the outside. I'm going to stitch this down so it's quite invisible and all nice out here. And hopefully it will look good in the end. And you know, it's a little bit, I was planning on having like this end here originally and having a little like cut out square in between the two lines, but this is just overlapping instead. Of course, it's still a little bit geometric, so therefore still a little bit art deco. And I think it will be fine. All right, so now that all my neckline stuff is finished, obviously it's less pretty on the sides where I had to do that little bit of patching in, but I did just stitch this down so that it will not fray or do anything weird. Um, so it's not as pretty inside, but what really matters is, is it pretty on the outside? Um, so I just, you know, hand stitched all this down with whatever stitch I needed at the time. So I was either like slip stitching it or hem stitching it or prick stitching it. You know, you know me and not knowing the names of hand stitches. I just make it so, so that it looks nice. You know, I don't really know what they're called. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm a slap dash kind of seamstress, not a know what things are precisely called, I guess. Um, over here, I'm going to use the bias tape I made out of the same fabric. I'm going to go ahead and sew that an inch wide here so it's, you know, matches with this. I will go ahead and stitch this. This is right sides together. Turn this in and then I will hand stitch it down on the inside, but I will machine stitch this on and I'll do that same thing for both sleeves. So of course, after finishing that sleeve trimming, I just had to hem this dress and it was finished. So here is what it looks like on me. Uh, my biggest thing that I would change about this dress, however, is the sleeve length. I just think they're far too long. A lot of 1920s dresses are actually sleeveless, um, but I like having a little bit of coverage on my upper arm, so I like to have some sleeve at least, but this is just a little bit long for me. Although there was that one inspiration image that this does look a little bit like. So I've just paired this with some white 1950s gloves, a beaded, a long beaded necklace in navy blue, and a navy blue 1930s crocheted handbag. Um, the most accurate part of the styling being my shoes, actually, because these are actually a replica late Edwardian and 1920s shoe from American Duchess. This is the style called May um, in the navy blue, of course, and I think they are just gorgeous. But let's talk about all the things I could be doing to style this better, shall we? Because goodness, here are some images of actual 1920s daywear styling uh, or women from the 1920s rocking the actual look here. So um, let's talk about a few things. We're going we're gonna to be start studying these images for a minute here. Beginning with the fact that all these images show close-fitting cloche hats with small brims, basically. Uh, I mean, the brims vary from no brim at all to having like a few inches of brim here, but all these hats are very, you know, close-fitting, low-fitting, over-the-forehead hats in this similar cloche, cloche style um, that is pretty ubiquitous throughout the 1920s and very much associated with the 1920s, and yet this style of hat both the actual ones from the 1920s are very rare to come across. Um, also, because it is such a close-fitting hat like this over the head, it, unlike, you know, a 1940s tilt hat that doesn't exactly have to fit, a hat like this does have to fit your head size, so finding ones that will fit you can be hard, and then, like, finding vintage ones to begin with, and then finding ones that will fit, it's a double whammy of hard to do. And then they don't make a lot of modern replicas of very actually 20s looking ones. They make some, some generic, like, garden hat kind of cloche. Cloche, I'm again not positive how to say that hat, but to find ones that actually look, you know, geometric and truly 20s is not easy. And again, then you have to find them in your size and in a color that hopefully works with your wardrobe. So, not the easiest hat style to find. And that is why I have currently zero of this style of 1920s hat in my collection right now. I am in the market, as it were. Um, the other thing we can notice here is that all these ladies are wearing silk stockings. Yes, that's right. They're all wearing silk stockings. There was no pantyhose uh, like I was wearing in just a second ago. I was wearing actually nude fishnets, which would have been considered something worn possibly, if at all, uh, only for the stage and never in day-to-day -day life like these gals are modeling for us here. So these, all these ladies are wearing silk stockings. Um, they are available from American Duchess. I have not tried them, but I am, of course, again, in the market to get some so that I can style my 1920s day wear far more accurately. Well, and evening wear for that matter, because 
It was all about stockings at this time. Um, but you can see, however, while stockings were required, something that was not is gloves, interestingly enough. So you'll see in the image on the far right here, ladies got, got no gloves on. Um, so while gloves were still a very common thing, they were not necessarily um, mandatory. And we'll see in an, another image in a moment here, just how many women were out and about, out in the day, on the street, not wearing gloves. So we think of gloves as something that is extremely... You know, oh, everyone wore a hat and gloves every time they left the house. But in the 1920s, it was actually the beginning of when suntans um, from like being on vacation, having a tan, coming back from your vacation became a trendier thing uh, that had never before been a trend. It was always, you know, if you were tanned, it meant you were working outside and therefore were not posh. So it was uh, frowned upon. But this at this time, it was like when the French Riviera and like being outside golfing and um, going to the beach and stuff like that became more like posh leisurely activities so to have t uh, tanned toned limbs was actually quite stylish and therefore you may not want to have covered those up with gloves all the time especially in the summer months when gloves are at let's be honest uh, inconvenient anyway they were still you know required for formal uh things like garden parties going to church weddings um a lot of settings required gloves still traveling or driving even but you, they were not as mandatory as perhaps we think they are or think they were um, in modern time here. Also, I would like to point out we have a lovely parasol in one of these images and also other accessories like handbags. Um, handbags are another thing I find kind of hard to find for the 1920s. Perhaps the style of handbag most associated with the like Art Deco period in general, um, we can see in the image, the second the second leftmost image here, this gal in a lovely layered afternoon dress here with, again, a cloche hat. And she does seem to be wearing gloves and lovely silk stockings and very, very pretty shoes. She's also carrying a chain or like a mesh metal handbag here. This is a style that we really associate with kind of like the flapper era as it were, the art deco era. But as you can see, this she's wearing an afternoon dress. So this is not an evening ensemble. Um, it is a little bit more formal or dressed up. But this bag clearly was still something that was considered um, acceptable to wear in daywear. I think I, before doing more research for this video, would have thought that mesh bags were only for evening, but clearly they were worn in the daytime as well. The uh, image to the left of this one, uh, with these two gals, you know, kind of more of a candid image taken out, like probably at the races or at the beach, I'm not exactly sure where this is, uh, but these gals are a little bit more windswept, and they both, again, also have handbags and scarves and all kinds of stuff going on. Lots of accessories here, bracelets, beaded jewelry, again, close-fitting hats, um, very cute shoes. That's a common thing here. But chunky, chunky bracelets on the girl uh, on the right here in this image. You can see how big those bracelets are. You would, I would never have thought that they wore things like that in the 20s, but clearly this image is showing us that they did. But again, two different styles of handbag up here, more of a fold over clutch in this gal's hand and then the um, black handbag on the wrist of the other gal next to her. You also notice that um, in this image that they seem to be wearing separates, like matched separates. And these sort of pleated skirts seem to be quite a ubiquitous thing with like a knit sweater over them. So a very common style clearly for day in the 1920s. In the most centermost image here, the more like sepia toned image, which I believe is from, seems to be from a Japanese catalog or magazine. Um, one of the gals is carrying a like fold over leather clutch handbag, which is something I would never have thought of as a 1920s item, but it clearly was much more common than I thought it was after doing some more research today on 1920s handbags. I will actually link you to a post from the website Vintage Dancer in the description of this video where you can read more about different styles of handbags in the 1920s because I was trying to do more research for them today and actually try and find some uh, out in the world to add to my collection, but clearly I can wear my clutch handbags with 1920s things more easily than I would have thought, I suppose. I guess this is when the clutch handbag kind of came it started uh, or became a thing basically and again on this catalog page or magazine page or whatever this is um we see close fitting cloche hats in coordinated colors with matching ensembles that are separates again um and these like sort of loose coat why well, it's, it's hard to call them a coat when they're clearly made of such a lightweight fabric or a um, fabric that match matches the rest of the dress or ensemble worn with them um a lightweight layering piece like this is clearly another common thing almost like a car coat sort of shape but just made for day wear, obviously. And again, in this image, silk stockings and sort of like Mary Jane-ish style shoes. Um, and then the image on the most far right here, we have again, more separates as opposed to dresses. All of this image, maybe the girl on the uh, left-hand side, maybe that is a dress. It almost looks like separates though, doesn't it? Lightweight knits clearly were a very um, common thing once they were introduced in the 1920s here. This is when they began and clearly they took off. Um, again, we have silk stockings and very pretty shoes here, but then no gloves and so we are seeing some nice bracelet 
action here again, but again, close fitting cloche hats. This is, you know, my number one gripe that I cannot find hats like this, so I'm in the market. Then we can take a look at this sort of street scene candid image from the 1920s. Um, we'll try and find some more information on this photo. I just grabbed it off of Pinterest to be able to talk about it. But again, we can see in this image how many women are out and about on the street in front of a church or building or whatever this is, not wearing gloves. So clearly it was quite common to go gloveless, but we can get a better idea here of just how common those close style hats were and uh, just what people were wearing day to day in the 1920s, basically, and how things were styled. And then a few more images here for some more styling notes. Again, we can see the very common close fitting cloche hat here. Um, these ones on the image on the left hand side are seems to be more of a fall winter image here. Um, although they can't be that cold if their legs are out like that. I would think you would bring a blanket to set over your lap if you were being a spectator at this time and it was actually quite chilly. But we do have a fox fur um, like shawl going on here and then felt um, hats as opposed to straw or fabric, I suppose. But again, really very Art Deco, um, streamlined, stylistic, asymmetric hats going on here. Just gorgeous and so hard to find now. It's just nearly impossible. Um, I'm, again, I'm thinking we're probably looking at some silk stockings here and then layering of scarves. And again, those sort of outer coat layers, um, even though they're not like a thick overcoat, but like sort of coat, shawl, jackety pieces as well. Um, and then bead of jewelry and corsages. And then we can see actually the gal who's facing the camera, she's not wearing a hat at all. So, hey, look, you can go out without a hat and without gloves. She's dressed quite casually uh, by our modern assumptions about 1920 style. Actually, the gal behind her whose face is hidden is wearing a beret hat. And we all know how much I love a beret on this channel. So any excuse to be able to wear a beret in all time periods, I will gladly accept. And then in our central image here, this was another one of the dresses that was inspiring me to make a cotton 1920s dress. Although this one is a much finer and like finely pleated cotton, um, very nice dress here. The seamstress who made this dress had a lot more patience than I do, uh, fortunately for this gal wearing it. But again, her cloche has a bit of a larger brim on it. So we're seeing a little bit more of a brim here, probably for summertime. And then she also has a parasol here. This seems to be um, a like what I would call a tourist parasol, um, like an oil paper style parasol from either maybe Japan or China. I have a couple of touristy parasols like this, but I also have a couple of actual Japanese wagasa umbrellas that are much sturdier and like made for the rain, actually, as opposed to just being a parasol. Um, I don't use them very often, but then again, I'm not going anywhere right now, so I'm not using them at all, sadly. But I do love collecting wagasa. And we actually do see a more kind of covered up shoe with this, but I'm sure again she's wearing stockings because you may have been able to go without gloves, but I doubt it was considered proper to go without stockings at this time. And then in our last image here, I just wanted to show again two different styles of this same similar low hat, um, but one with like very little brim at all. And then again, one with more of a brim, but pulled close, you know, down close over the eyes. Uh, this hat was worn very low over the face. Also, we see again in this image, a beaded necklace and a scarf. So more accessorizing than I normally do with my 1920s things in all of these images, really. That was the big takeaway for me is that I need to work on my accessorizing if I want to have an accurate 1920s look. And now, of course, Accuracy is not everything in vintage styling. Um, I do think, however, it is nice to know what rules you are breaking when it comes to vintage styling. So it's nice to know what would have been done in the period so you can consciously make a different choice and or be on the lookout for pieces that you can add into your wardrobe to create a more cohesive era specific look if that is something you are after. But I really don't think you have to be accurate. I think you can wear things however you like or however um, you know you want to based on your own personal wardrobe and your own personal stylistic choices, I guess. But I personally am trying to diversify my art deco daywear options. So 20s and 30s daywear, I think I need a better selection if I want to be able to style things in those decades. And seeing as oddly enough, it's kind of my job to do vintage styling, I do want to have a better selection of items to pull from in order to style things to show you all how to do so, I suppose. Um, but here I am styling this dress again with more tan and like adventure ready-ish kind of accessories. I have little small celluloid cell sunglasses on here. These are more of a 1930s style, but we're trying to make it work. And I do have gloves on here. They are more of a gauntlet style, which is correct for the 1920s. However, these gloves are nylon and from the 1950s. And so they still aren't perfect for this look, but a small leather clutch as we have learned is. So I'm glad that this one will work for this outfit. And then again, the shoes here were an American Duchess shoe. They no longer are available. They might still be available, I think in other colors, but I don't think this cognac tan color is available anymore from them. And then lastly, I just have on a long chain and bead necklace here. Um, of course, 
with this outfit, I would like to add a hat primarily. Chiefly, I would like to add a hat to this outfit. Um, that's the most glaringly obvious thing that's missing here. But that does not mean that other things are not also missing from my being able to style this dress correctly. Chiefly, uh, a proper slip. As we can see here, my slip is too short. That's because I'm wearing a 1950s nylon slip underneath this 1920s style dress. I need to make a proper uh, ivory or white like silk or maybe even a rayon slip to wear underneath dresses like this. Um, something in a much more deco style that will work for when I'm styling outfits like this. And then of course the other glaring problem here are my stockings. I'm wearing nude fishnets with a pronounced back seam. These would be at best a costume or stage uh, item in the 20s. If they had anything like this at all, it would have been for the stage, not for wearing any sense of propriety. Uh, if you had any sense of propriety, I mean to say, like these back seam stockings. No, no, no. Um, at least my shoes again are accurate. That's helping skew this look a little bit. I have faux jade jewelry on here, and I do think matching bracelets like this helps give it a more 20s look. It's kind of a Chanel thing, so that's at least helping us out a little bit. And then my beret here is a knit linen beret. I got this uh, beret at the Galleries Lafayette, but of course if you know how to knit or crochet, you could make berets like this in any color you so desire, which is good for you because I do not have that skill. I wish I did. But again, I think this ensemble would be proved greatly by having a proper slip, a proper silk stocking, and then possibly even, you know, um, a better hat, uh, something a little bit more accurate, just because that's kind of the, the, I tend to lean towards accuracy, or at least liking to know when I'm breaking the rules and to do so very deliberately. Like if I'm styling something, you know, let's say Blade Runner inspired, I'll take something quite accurately 40s and then put a science fiction skew on it. And I'd still think of something I'm doing purposefully. But here with 1920s and deco styling, I would like to have more accurate options at my disposal. I hope you all enjoyed this little bit of a different sort of sewing slash styling video. Let me know if you'd like to see something like this again in the future where I perhaps make something that I've already shown how to do on the channel before, but then include more of a styling focus at the end as opposed to a focus on the pattern drafting and sewing for things that I've already shown, or if you just want me to repeat myself. Um, I always am afraid to repeat things that I've already shown how to do or change or sew on the channel. Uh, I'm always afraid to do them again uh, because I just feel like that's possibly just too repetitive and you don't want to see me you know, so exactly the same thing over and over again, but let me know if you do, uh, or maybe if I can just do something more like this, where I focus on a couple different ways to style a piece and focus less on the sewing of it, or if you just want me to skip the sewing if it's repetitive and just do the styling, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In any case, thank you for joining me here today, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.